number 10, Vanessa Hudgens. As we are all aware, Disney likes to keep their stars as clean as possible, so when they're caught being a little more adult and risque, that's definitely a problem for the company. This became Vanessa Hudgens' reality in 2007 after some of her private photos got leaked. Vanessa opened up about the scandal years later, saying that this was traumatic for her having lost her privacy in that moment. It was also a big deal for Disney who was trying to cover the story up and keep her image intact. Since she was one of the faces of the High School Musical franchise, it was important to the company to make this all go away. Joe Jonas even opened up about this time in Vanessa's life, saying that while he and his brothers were working for Disney at this time, he remembers the day that the scandal broke and how the executives had Vanessa in their office for the whole day trying to deal with that mess. Joe even said that the other executives approached him and his brothers and praised them for not having a scandal like this. This put a lot of pressure on the Jonas Brothers to always stay perfect in the eyes of the company, so just knowing how much pressure they had on themselves after that, it must have been so much worse for Vanessa. She apologized to her young fans for the pictures and expressed remorse, and luckily for her, Disney was able to salvage her career after that. At number 9, Jake Paul. Once upon a time in 2017, Jake Paul was a Disney star. I know, shocking. He was one of the stars of the Disney Channel show Bizarre Bark, and though the show was a success for both Disney and Jake, too much bad press ended with Jake losing his job. Around this time, Jake was often in the news being slammed for his stunts and tomfoolery because of his team tenmates and the disturbances that he had been causing. From lighting backyards on fire to noise complaints, Jake's neighbors had police issuing warnings and fines for all sorts of things, and whenever Jake would get in trouble, the media reported it, and it all got back to Disney. They had apparently been monitoring the situation, but things kept getting out of hand online with Jake's YouTube channel, as he was seen doing things that weren't necessarily brand friendly. Ultimately, Jake and the executives at Disney came to the decision to take Jake out of the equation, and they ended up letting him go in the end. It was a number of scandals that really did Jake in, but it was still serious enough for him to get fired. If you guys are enjoying the video so far, why not consider leaving a like to show your support? At number 8, Mitchell Musso. Hannah Montana star Mitchell Musso was having a lot of success at Disney. He had been a series regular on the hit show and even branched off to work on Phineas and Ferb and Pair of Kings, but as we all know, when you get in trouble, you get the axe from the mouse. In 2011, Mitchell Musso was arrested and charged with a DUI after failing to stop for an officer directing traffic. He pleaded no contest to the charge and he was sentenced to 36 months probation, was forced to complete alcohol education classes, and was forced to pay a fine as well. After being charged, Disney made steps toward distancing themselves from Musso. He was taken off the show A Pair of Kings and his prank show was cancelled, and his career was essentially ruined because of it. He had a good run with Disney, but bad press just was too much to cover up and it blew up in their faces. At number 7, Miley Cyrus. In 2008, Disney was hit with a huge scandal that nearly ruined one of their biggest shows at the time. Hannah Montana was a hit and nothing seemed to be derailing the show's success, at least until a photo shoot with Vanity Fair became a serious issue for executives. Miley Cyrus posed on the cover of Vanity Fair in a way that was deemed inappropriate by Disney standards, since the star was seen posing wearing nothing but a bed sheet covering her chest and having an exposed back. Though nothing was really shown, and the then 15-year-old Miley said that she loved the shoot and thought it was very creative, the Disney exec had a meltdown because it wasn't the image that they wanted for her and that it could have ruined Hannah Montana. When the photo was published, parents got concerned because Hannah Montana seemed to be a role model for a lot of kids, and parents didn't want these photos influencing their children. Disney actually accused Vanity Fair of deliberately manipulating Miley and trying to sabotage Disney. The president of Disney Channel Worldwide even saw this as such a huge issue that when speaking about Miley's public image, he said, quote, For Miley Cyrus to be a good girl is now a business decision for her. Parents have invested in her godliness. If she violates that trust, she won't get it back. End quote. Disney was so invested in her image that it hurt Miley in the long run, as she said over the years. And at number six, Dog with a Blog. I'm not sure how many of you may be familiar with the show Dog with a Blog, but for those who may be unfamiliar with the show, the title says it all. It was a Disney Channel show about a family dog who wrote a blog. But what the title didn't say is how much it took to get that show off the ground and the scandal that broke around it. Even though I wouldn't say this show was top tier because from the few episodes that I've seen, it really 
really isn't. There is a scandal around this show that is frankly bigger and more dramatic than the show could ever be. Apparently, there was a scandal surrounding the dog who actually starred in the show. When the role was first cast, the part went to a performing dog named Kuma. Kuma was in all of the promotional material, the photos, and the first five episodes of the show. He was the best fit for the role because of his experience, but all of a sudden, he was fired. No, he didn't bite anyone and he didn't have any accident on set. It was because of the drama with his owner over fears that Kuma was being overworked. Kuma's owner said that he'd been overworked on set, having to be on for 12 to 14 hours a day. The stress of working affected Kuma so much that he suffered a seizure on the third day of filming. The owner also said that they were being underpaid for their work, and so she told execs that she would need to pull Kuma from the show for his safety, or at least until there were new guidelines in place for his protection. Instead, the company that hired Kuma sent them a termination letter, and Kuma was replaced. Disney didn't want to adjust things for their animal safety, and so they just got rid of him and replaced him with another performer who wouldn't complain. At number five, Jake T. Austin. Jake T. Austin was still in Disney's good books up until 2013 when he got in some legal trouble. The former star of Wizards of Waverly Place had just moved over to one of Disney's other networks, Freeform, starring in the show The Fosters. Even though he was moving on to more mature roles, it was still recommended that he stay out of bad press. Clearly, he didn't do that because he's on this list. In 2013, Jake started having some trouble with the law as he was caught driving under the influence on a few occasions. In one incident, he crashed his car into a parked car while under the influence, and another instance saw him get involved in a hit-and-run car crash. Though there were no injuries, Jake still faced bad press for his trouble with the law and being in possession of alcohol. At number four, Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato was quickly becoming another big Disney star after the success of Camp Rock and Sunny with a Chance, but in 2010, there came a scandal that was seemingly the beginning of the end for her Disney career. News broke of an incident between Demi and one of her dancers that changed her image and saw execs scrambling to bury this story. The incident happened while Demi was on tour with the Jonas Brothers, and as Demi was boarding their flight, she was aggravated after having gotten in trouble with her manager for her behavior the night before. Demi assumed that one of her dancers had tattletailed on her, and so she found one of the dancers that she held responsible and had a brief altercation with her. Demi went to her seat and left everyone else on the flight in shock. Demi left the dancer with a black eye, but she was about to face much worse as news broke of this outburst. Demi ended up leaving the tour to recover from emotional and physical distress, but not too long afterwards, Disney was done with the star, leaving Camp Rock and Sunny with a chance up in the air. At number three, Hilary Duff. It was a feud to end all Disney feuds. There's nothing worse than two teen girls fighting over a boy because you know how messy that can get. This is what happened between Hilary Duff and Lindsay Lohan during their years-long feud over Aaron Carter. Their feud first started in 2001, when Aaron Carter was on the set of Lizzie McGuire. The two met and hit it off, and they started dating for a bit. Little did Hilary know for a while, but Aaron was also dating Lindsay Lohan at the same time. They both had a relationship with Aaron for a little over a year, and after they both ended things with him, they both could have just gone their separate ways, but oh no, of course not. Instead, they had a public feud which consisted of both girls crashing each other's film premieres and talking about each other in the media. They antagonized each other for years before deciding that they're too old for their squabbles. Though this wasn't a huge controversial scandal, it was still a big thing for a while to see two Disney darlings at each other's throats like that. They were low-key shady and all because of a boy. I mean, he cheated on you with each other. Definitely not someone worth fighting over. At number two, Bella Thorne. Looking at Bella Thorne now, you see her as someone who is often in the news for something negative. Recently, she's been criticized for her diss of her ex-girlfriend Tana Mojo in her newest song, and last summer she also faced backlash for her OnlyFans scam. But in the past, back in her Disney days, things were different. She was sheltered and marketed as an innocent kid with a lot of talent. As she grew up, Bella told sources about how Disney made her conform to their standards, even though all she wanted to do was branch out and be herself. One of her attempts of being herself caused a scandal after Bella was photographed wearing a specific bathing suit when she was a teenager that wasn't deemed brand friendly by Disney. According to Bella, this scandal nearly cost her her job and her family's livelihood, and she said that any other scandals after that would have caused her to get fired. She was forced to be someone else for the duration of her time at Disney, and that scandal is a reminder of how seriously they take their star's public image. And finally, at number one, Adrian Bailon. The Cheetah Girls films were another set of hit films from the Disney Channel, and obviously the film stars had to conform with the harsh standards that all other Disney stars had to. 
After making three films with the company, one of the film's stars, Adrienne Bailon, was looking to branch out from Disney and step into roles that were more suited for her age. Because she was in her 20s, she wanted to step away from these films, and to do so, she came up with a scheme that would no doubt end her contract. Adrienne ended up leaking her own private photos, causing a stir online and in the media. This bad press was obviously not good for Disney, and so they were forced to let her go. The media picked the scandal apart because of how wild it was since it started off as a mere leak and turned into a scandal after it was discovered that Adrian was behind it all. And so after all was said and done, the cheaty girls were no more, Adrian was out. But hey, at least she got what she wanted, right? Silver lining. At number four, Peggy Lee. Before I get into the current drama that's going on now with Disney, I'd first like to tell you about one actress who's first sued Disney because of their contract. It seems as though Disney is already familiar with their stars suing because of their contract because back in 1987, actress Peggy Lee was blindsided by the media company's release of the film Lady and the Tramp, and a lawsuit ensued. Peggy was one of the people behind the making of the 1955 film. Peggy voiced the character Peg as well as the Siamese cats Cy and Am. Very creative. On top of that, Peggy also sang and co wrote a handful of songs in the film like He's a Tramp and Bella Note. Peggy also contributed to the storyline of the film, making an effort to keep the film family friendly and to avoid anything too triggering for younger audiences. Needless to say, Peggy contributed a lot to the film and for all of her hard work, she was paid $4,500. Lady and the Tramp went on to become Disney's best selling film, dethroning the other Disney classic Snow White which had held the title for so many years and because it was such a success in its heyday, Disney decided to do a wide release of the film on VHS in the late 80s, and this brought the company $90 million in profit. Now this was great news for Disney because they had made so much money, but it was bad news for Peggy because she didn't get any of that. Apparently, Disney was reluctant to share their profits with Peggy and they only offered her a small fee, so she took matters to court. After taking a look at Peggy's contract, it was found that Disney technically did not have the right to sell copies of Peggy's work, and therefore they were in violation of their contractual agreement with the actress. After a two week court battle, it was determined that Peggy deserved a bigger cut from the VHS sales, and so she was awarded $2.3 million. This case is pretty similar to what's going on between Scarlett Johansson and Disney, so it will be interesting to see how things play out here, and maybe history will repeat itself, and Disney will have to shell out a hefty amount of money. At number 3, Emma Stone. Now although this has yet to be confirmed, sources say that actress Emma Stone could be the next one to seek legal action against Disney. Emma was under contract for Disney after starring in the movie Cruella, which was released in May of this year. This film's release is really what's causing the problem with Emma, because much like Scarlett Johansson and the Black Widow movie, the theatrical release and premiere access on Disney Plus were on the same day, meaning that audiences were able to choose between going to the theater to watch the movie or stay at home and stream it from the company's platform. As part of her contract, Emma was given royalties from the film's theatrical release, which means that she wasn't given a portion of the money from the streaming platform and therefore was cheated out of a pretty good sum of money. Now, after seeing Scarlett take on Disney in court, there are reports that Emma might be inclined to join in on that lawsuit to fight for wages lost due to this loophole in the contract. Do you guys think that Emma should join in on the fight? Some people have said that she made enough money and doesn't need to fight for more, but others say that it's less about the money and more so about the principle to show that these companies can't do these kinds of things to their contractors. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. At number two, Emily Blunt. Another star who is reportedly considering taking legal action against Disney is Emily Blunt. Emily's film Jungle Cruise was recently released and just like Emma Stone and Scarlett Johansson, her film was released in theaters and on the Disney Plus platform at the same time, causing the same problem that the other two actresses are currently facing. The problem that a lot of people have pointed out with the film being released in both theaters and on Disney Plus is that those who choose to watch it from home on the streaming platform are able to pay a premier access fee and then watch it as many times as they want, whereas in theaters you just pay for your ticket and you only get to see it once. The potential to make more money is there, but Disney hasn't taken it, which is why Emily Blunt is watching her movie sales more closely with this release, waiting to make her decision on whether or not she will be suing Disney. Emily has already gone through something similar, as she and her husband John Krasinski had already gotten into a debate with Paramount Plus over the release of their film A Quiet Place 2. It is said that because of the pushback that came with the release of their film due to the pandemic, Emily is very much against this hybrid style of film release, and so we shouldn't really be surprised to see a lawsuit come from 
Emily as well. She and John were already able to push for a 45 day gap between the theatrical release of A Quiet Place 2 and the Paramount Plus release, so who knows what Emily might fight for this time with Disney. And finally, and number one, Scarlett Johansson. Now, finally, let's talk about Scarlett Johansson and the drama that started all of this in the first place. Following the release of Black Widow, both in theaters and on Disney Plus, Scarlett and her legal team issued a lawsuit against Disney alleging that they breached her contract because they went through with doing a hybrid release of the newest Marvel film. In her lawsuit, the actress alleged that Disney guaranteed an exclusive theatrical release of the film, saying that her salary was to be largely based on box office earnings. In response to the lawsuit, a spokesperson for Disney released a statement saying that the actress's lawsuit had no merit and called the legal action being brought forward, quote, especially sad and distressing in its callous disregard for the horrific and prolonged global effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, end quote. They also went on to say, quote, Disney has fully complied with Miss Johansson's contract and furthermore, the release of Black Widow on Disney Plus with Premier Access and has significantly enhanced her ability to earn additional compensation on top of the 20 million she has received to date. At the end of the day, it's not really about the money, but it's the fact that they breached Scarlett's contract. They promised an exclusive theatrical release and then went back on that, and I feel as though this lawsuit is just to turn this action into a lesson for Hollywood. When the film was released on July 9th, it brought in $80 million at the box office and $60 million on Disney+, Plus. but even though that's a lot of money, it's still the lowest grossing Marvel film to date. It could be because of the pandemic or maybe the hybrid release affected the film's earnings, but I'm sure that at the end of this, the real analytics will be brought forward as Scarlett takes on this huge company in the lawsuit of the year. Now, I want to hear your thoughts on this whole lawsuit thing going on with Scarlett Johansson. Whose side are you on? Do you agree with Disney or Scarlett? And who do you think will end up winning in the end? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Starting us off at number 10 is Zac Efron. Fans were not happy when he did not show up to the High School Musical reunion, and many people wondered why. It appeared that we were not all in this together after all because he was the only one who did not show up. He says he was filming Dirty Grandpa at the time and couldn't make it, but some of his comments have made fans believe differently. Zach admitted he can't celebrate High School Musical because it's not real. He said, you can't enjoy or celebrate it. It's not a real thing. The face on the lunchbox and you can't share that with your friends. He revealed a lot about his experience with the movie throughout the years and also revealed they removed his recorded voice tracks from the final cut of the movie without even telling him. They replaced his voice with another singer, Drew Seeley, but Zach fought for his voice to be left in in the sequel. He said he had to put his foot down and fight to get his real voice in the movies, which is actually really awkward if you ask me. Like what an awkward position to be in as a teen when you were hired for that role, which required singing. Up next, number nine is Nick Jonas. He is another Disney OG who has had some things to say about his years spent working with Disney. He has said some positive things, admitting that he has good memories and that it felt like he was going to summer camp sometimes. But with that, he also said there was a lot of drama because people started dating and then throughout the years, they would just go and date other people on Disney. So it got very messy, but that is kind of expected. He also said that Disney makes you put on a persona and that creative control is taken away. He said the network has its faults and also said, I quote, Disney doesn't create role models, it creates characters. Which is a pretty bold statement because a lot of his fans idolized him for his characters on the TV shows and movies, but that is not really him. So their characters might be role models, but that's why fans get so shocked when like the star themselves does something that is so out of character compared to like what they're personal life is about, like Miley Cyrus. Although I think she went a little above and beyond. Swiping the number eight spot is Christina Aguilera. Yes, she was on Disney. How can we ever forget that she was one of the members of the Mickey Mouse Club alongside Britney Spears? But she was also one of the first people on Disney to let us know that there could be some drama with your co-stars because you're actually pitted against them oftentimes. Their feud has been the topic of conversation for years and turns out they were kind of in competition with each other throughout their career, but it all started when they were on Disney. As they started getting older and breaking into their own individual careers, the world seemed to have a problem with Christina and often compared her to Britney. She told Cosmo, I remember being hurt by these commercials on MTV 
TV pitting Britney as the good girl and me as the bad girl. It's like, if I'm going to be demure and innocent, that's okay. But if I'm going to just be myself, I'm trouble. It's difficult breaking out of that Disney persona for one thing, but doing that while you're being compared to your former co-star is even worse. In spot number seven is Ashley Tisdale. Speaking of co-star rivalry, I bet you thought everything was peaches and greens on the High School Musical cast. Two characters who seemed to be inseparable were the Evans twins, Ryan and Sharpay Evans. Their sibling duo is iconic in the Disney world, but Ashley let us know that her time on Disney wasn't always what it seemed to be. Apparently, she and Lucas Grabeel, who played her brother Ryan, got off on the wrong foot during the audition process and hated each other because of it. Years down the road, they made a YouTube video together where they did a cover to one of their High School Musical songs, but they spoke about their off-screen drama first. She said, we were not close, we were not good friends, let's just be honest, it's been 10 years, we can totally talk about this now, we hated each other, like I'm not kidding. <laughs> Lucas explained where the animosity came from and said that during their audition, she gave him unsolicited notes, which she did not ask for, and it rubbed him the wrong way. Basically, it was just a very sharp hey thing to do. Luckily, now that their time on Disney is well over, they are able to be friends. Up next, number six is Vanessa Hudgens. She's always been one to say that her Disney experience on High School Musical has always been a love-hate relationship. Dating her co-star Zac Efron was difficult because all the girl fans were always all over him and she admitted to getting jealous and insecure about it. Outside of her relationship though, she revealed it was difficult for her to break away from her role as Gabriella when trying to book work outside of Disney. She said she had to put in some serious effort to break the typecast and shed that Disney star stigma. During an interview, she said that Disney, I quote, closed people's minds up as to which characters I could portray. Luckily, she was able to make it happen and she's starred in a handful of movies since then and even Broadway shows. So she did something right. Halfway through our countdown at number five is Ross Lynch. You would know him if you watched the Disney show, Austin and Allie, where he took on one of the title characters, Austin. Being in the Disney spotlight throughout his teens, he revealed it was very difficult because people expect you to be the character that they see on TV. He admitted that he got lonely often and said that it was hard for people around him to accept the fact that he wasn't actually his character, Austin. He said, people start to think that because you come from Disney that you're a certain way. You're perceived to be such an angel and really you're just an actor that booked a job. Ross also said that people on the Disney team would also make it seem like they found him and raised him, but to him it was always just a job and he had a regular life outside of it or try to at least. Coming in hot at number four is Brenda Song. Most people who think of Brenda Song immediately think of her iconic Disney character, London Tipton from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. It's hard to forget a character like that in my opinion, but that was the problem for her, the typecast once you tried to break away from Disney. When asked if she regrets her time on Disney, she has always said no, but admitted that it was difficult growing up on TV and Disney at that. Similar to Vanessa Hudgens, when auditioning for other work outside of Disney, casting directors had a very hard time not seeing her as London Tipton. She struggled with being able to book roles and roles that she did book had very similar character traits to her character from The Speed Life of Zack and Cody. I mean, honestly, I feel like I'm personally guilty of this because I cannot picture her as anyone else but London Tipton. And when I see her in other movies, I'm like, it's just weird. It's not London Tipton. Taking over our third spot is Zendaya. This Disney star continued to work on Disney even after taking on one of the lead roles in their TV series, Shake It Up. She starred alongside Bella Thorne and even after it ended, she continued to book some other roles on Disney like her show, Casey Undercover. But her experience with Disney wasn't always easy and even though she has had some positive things to say about the network, she also said her time on Shake It Up was very difficult at times. She admitted to J14 that during her time filming, she was forced to compete against her co-star, Bella Thorne, who was also her close friend. She said, we were kind of forced to compete against each other. It made the whole first season of the show just very awkward for us. Since then though, they have become good friends, but Zendaya admits it was never easy feeling like you're being pinned against your co-star, let alone someone who is also your good friend. That would freaking suck. 
Rolling in star number two is Kelly Berglund. She starred on Disney show Lab Rats and admits that being on the Disney Channel is an opportunity of a lifetime, but that it does come with its struggles. She talked to La Palm Magazine and admitted that you sort of know what you're signing up for when you step into the Disney world, but that it doesn't make it any easier. She tried to warn other young stars about how hard it is to grow up in that Disney spotlight. She admitted that having your awkward teen years happen in front of the world can be a struggle. She said, being a teenager and growing up can already be tough enough as it is. Try having your awkward years put in front of a spotlight for the whole world to see. On top of that, she said she always felt like she was trying to meet other people's expectations and it made it hard for her to find who she really was at that time. I can't imagine having to live my awkward years in front of the world because they were bad. Very bad. Winning the number one spot is Ali and AJ. Fans were pumped recently when they released an uncensored version of their song, Potential Breakup Song, which actually came out back in 2007. Their music career took off while they were under Disney Channel's music label, Hollywood Records, but then they took a massive break from music altogether and then later revealed why. Apparently it was their time under Disney that made them ultimately decide to walk away from their music. During an interview with Playboy magazine, AJ said, we just lost love a little bit, you know? We had experienced so much as kids and I kind of feel like we learned a lot about the industry that put a little bit of bad taste in our mouth. Whether it was a couple of people who we worked with or whether it was just trying to find the right inspiration or what have you. Fans were not satisfied with her short explanation and to this day, people still wonder what exactly happened that made them up and leave so abruptly it seemed. I'm thinking it was some of the people she worked with, but that's just me.